Lord told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee, with head unbowed, prayed in this fashion. I give you thanks, O God, that I am not like the rest of men, grasping, crooked, adulterous, or even like this publican. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes on all I possess. The other man, however, kept his distance, not even daring to raise his head to heaven. All he did was beat his breast and say, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Believe me, this man went home from the temple justified, but the others did not. For everyone who exalts himself shall be humble, while he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Litany 
of comparison. And that is the theme for this Sunday. The act of comparing, which can become a trap in our lives. Thank you, Lindsay. The trap of comparison. Number one, and I want to make one thing very clear in the beginning. Comparison does not have to be a bad thing. Oh no. If the focus is on how much we have in common. If the focus is how much we have in common. That's not a bad thing. It becomes a bad thing when we begin to meddle, when we begin, begin, be, be, when we begin to intrude ourselves with the things that are different in a manner that can become rude, judgmental, or hurtful. And often we do that in our lives. And with that kind of behavior, we, be, we begin to break down the relationship with one another. And that is a bad thing. That kind of comparison can be a sinful thing, as we saw in today's gospel reading. Oh, I thank you, God, that I'm not unjust, that I'm not like that guy there in the corner the act of comparing myself. That can become a trap in our lives. Now, Jackson and Julia, when you go home, look up Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. Look up Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. And our Lord, he makes it clear when he says, quote, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye. You hypocrite, our Lord says, you hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. This passage I just read to you reminds us of the dangers of comparison, my friends. The more we try to downplay our own weaknesses, and we got many, the more we try to downplay our own weaknesses by pointing out those of another person, that's the moment when you and I, when we start playing the role of that Pharisee religious leader in today's gospel reading. Yes, when you were listening to the Pharisee and his so-called prayer, you know, he can outshine many of us with his good deeds. But his self-righteousness, his self-righteousness, that spirit of self-righteousness ruined it all. It ruined it all for him. But the simple prayer of that tax collector brought salvation into his life. Thank you, guys. Now, there's a story in one town where two brothers, they were kind of involved in the underground business. And they were both living a wild life. And they were using their wealth to cover up the dark side of their lives. And both brothers, they attended the church where no not oh sorry, where the God where the grandmother went, and where they would offer great offerings to that parish family. Well, suddenly one of the brothers died, 
and the parish priest was asked to preach his funeral. And here the surviving wild brother, the surviving brother, he walked up to the priest in his office and he gave him this fat envelope saying to him, Father, I know you want to repair your sanctuary. Here's this envelope, but I only want to ask you for one favor. Tell the people at the funeral that my brother was a saint. Well, here the poor parish priest, Don Giuseppe, he wanted that envelope. He really wanted to repair his sanctuary, but he didn't see how he could make a statement like this in front of his parishioners. But then he had an idea. So he took that envelope from the brother. He gave him the word that he will say that at the funeral. He went quickly to the bank. He deposited that amount. Then on the next day at the funeral, he stood by the casket of that wild brother and he said, my brothers and sisters, this man was an ungodly sinner, wicked to the core, but compared to his brother, he was a saint. <laughs> In my ministry, I'll never do that. <laughs> Friends, comparison can be hurtful. It can be a trap for you and for me. But in life, in life, let us follow the example of the tax collector. Let us practice that humility, especially here together as brothers and sisters in Christ, because this is and will always be a hospital for sinners. This is and always will be a hospital for a sinner. So our first lesson today is the lesson of the tax collector, the lesson of humility. The lesson of that prayer, O oh God, be merciful to be a sinner. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God.